We're working on problem 4.2 of the Computer Science 320 2014 Winter 2 practice exam. Uh, in this problem we're supposed to give at least one trivial and one small instance of the problem we're working on and their minimal worst case total probe costs. This is something that we always try to do with our problems, giving some examples and in particular some trivial examples so we understand kind of the corner cases of the algorithm or the problem that we're working on and also some small instances that we can actually use to gain some insight without having to spend a whole bunch of time working on them is incredibly useful. Uh, so what's a trivial instance here? Um, it's tempting to say an instance with zero points, and honestly, I don't think it would be that big a deal to talk about an instance with zero points. But if I scroll back up again, I think I will find, yep, it says for a set of n points for n greater than zero. So technically, an instance with zero points isn't allowable. Uh, for this problem. So I think the, the smallest instance that we can have actually has one point. Okay, so let's give a, a small but not completely trivial instance. It's probably going to look a little bit like what we saw up above, uh, so I'm just going to scroll up a little bit so that we can see how the previous instance was laid out. We have the indexes, the values, and the costs. So let's put in an index. And uh, I'll, I'll keep counting from zero as we discussed with the previous problem. We said in the intro to the problem that everything was going to be one based and then our first example was zero based. Uh, it doesn't matter that much, but we'll stick with zero based. So we'll have an index of zero. Uh, the value doesn't really matter a whole lot here. We can kind of pick our value. Uh, I'll have it be five, I don't know. And then the cost, again, the cost doesn't really matter that much. So let's just have the cost be one. Now, I haven't mentioned the target as part of the problem. Uh, there's a sense in which the target is actually part of the problem. But our discussion last time about minimal worst case cost focuses on the idea that for a particular uh, set of values and costs, we might be interested in what is the worst case for an algorithm among all of the targets that it might search for. So I'm not going to specify a target here. Clearly we could specify, say, 5 is an interesting target. Um, anything less than 5 is also interesting. Anything greater than 5 is also interesting. So we might look at three instances here. One where we're searching for 5, one where we're searching for 0, and one where we're searching for 10 just to have different targets that force us into the only different scenarios that are interesting here. Uh, so let's do a small instance, um, you know, two indexes, maybe three. Let's go with two. So we'll have zero and one, and then we've got values. Uh, Five. We, we could put in some real values here or some negative values just to remind ourselves that there's nothing in the problem that says they're not possible, but honestly it doesn't give us a lot more insight on the, the algorithm, so I'm just going to leave it as is. Costs and, I don't know, eight and two. And looking at this, again, we could imagine targets that might be interesting. The targets break into, what, about uh, five categories, things less than three, three itself, things between three and five, five, and things larger than five. So you, you might imagine pulling each of those targets. One thing that's interesting to me here is to consider which index is better to probe first. And it seems likely in this case, all other things being equal, that you probably want to probe this index first, I guess. Uh, it's cheaper. Uh, certainly there are going to be targets that force you to probe both indexes. So regardless of what your algorithm is, that minimal worst case cost here is going to be 10 because there's going to be some target I can give your algorithm, no matter what your algorithm is, that's going to force it to probe both of these points. So that's kind of uninteresting still as an example. We, we would like to have an example large enough that there really is some algorithm that's better than some other algorithm according to this minimal worst case cost measure that we've settled on for comparing algorithms. And that's just not true here. Uh, every algorithm can be forced to probe both indexes. So every algorithm can be forced to spend that cost of 10. 
Um, so let's do a slightly larger index. Let's make one large enough that there are better and worse algorithms. So if we had three indexes, could we get to that point? Uh, yeah, absolutely, because if we probe the middle index first, let's, let's sketch that out. If we have three indexes, 0, 1, and 2, if we probe the middle index first, then we know we're only ever going to probe at most two of the points. However, if we probe the leftmost or the rightmost first, we might end up being forced to probe all three. So let's just give values here. And I'm going to keep it simple. One, three, five. We'll go with odd numbers. Why not? And costs. And I'll keep it simple again. I'll just make them all the same cost of 10. We can see here that the minimal worst case cost solution is going to have a cost of 20. The minimal worst case cost solution here is to probe the middle point first and then to probe whichever of the other points you're forced to in the worst case. And the worst case will force you to probe one of those points. And you'll end up with a total cost of 20. Is that always the best solution, or might it be better to probe like the leftmost point first? And I think the answer is no. If, if we've got a tree that, for example, probes the leftmost point, and then the rightmost point, and then the middle, well, if we ask for the value in the middle, it's going to be forced to probe all three. So no matter what costs we put on down below, we can kind of tell right away that the best strategy is going to be to probe at the middle first. Any strategy that probes at the left first or at the right first can be forced to consider all three of the points. So that is kind of an interesting example. It's small, but it's taught us uh, quite a few different things about the algorithm. Um, it is still the case that binary search is the best here. So the other thing I would be thinking about is, can I come up with an example that shows that binary search is not the best algorithm in general? Or is binary search really the best algorithm? So let's move on to that next.